insecurity and food crisis in Nigeria. Um, arable land, which is um, defined as a percentage of land area um, in Nigeria as of 2016, is reported as at 37.33%. One of the cardinal campaign objectives of the Buhari-led government is tackling insecurity. However, despite claims by federal authorities of increased security measures, an atmosphere of insecurity still lingers. Rising cases of banditry, kidnapping, herdsmen clashes, open grazing becoming a hot debatable issue abound with huge amount of ransom being paid. This is excluding PTSD, which is the post-traumatic stress disorder that has suffered, that's been suffered by victims, according to um, opposition. There's a huge value chain of opportunities explored by beneficiaries of the rots in the system. According to a Premium Times report, a total of 4.62 trillion naira has been allocated to the federal security sector in the past five years, despite claims by the Nigeria security forces that they are being underfunded. The recent um, NSAS protest against police br uh, brutality in the country led to the discovery and the mass looting of warehouses filled with food, food items meant to ameliorate food insecurity in the nation. The looting revealing Nigeria's pervasive poverty and food insecurity. Food insecurity in Nigeria is continuously being aggravated by a myriad of factors, including insecurity and most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic. About 9 out of 10 Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet. Nigeria has the second highest burden of stunted children across the globe, and millions of children suffer from acute malnutrition. About 3.7 million Nigerians or people across um, 16 states are, um, are food insecure. Other factors driving um, food crisis include civil conflicts, large-scale displacements, rising food prices, um, climate change, po uh, population growth, natural resources degradation, etc. Propelled by desertification, insecurity, and the loss of grazing land um, to expand a settlement. The southward um, migration of Nigerians, her uh, herdsmen, is causing um, a lot of violent competition over land with local farmers. In some communities, um, um, communities ha have had to pay bandits before they could harvest farm produce. Rising conflicts between herdsmen and farmers in the country is already six times um, deadlier in 2018 than Boko Haram's insurgency. Food supply to some parts of the um, south was cut off due to agitation from aggrieved Fulani herdsmen. Tens of thousands have been um, forcefully displaced, crops and livestock worth billions of naira destroyed at great cost to local and um, state economies. To stop the bloodshed, the federal government should bolster security for farmers and herdsmen. Um, should, they should end impunity for um, assailants, implement conflict resolution mechanisms, and the hasten livestock um, sector reforms. It should also elaborate the new National Livestock Transformation Plan and the commence implementation of same. States should also become um, creative in diversification of IGR. It is worth mentioning that um, embracing innovation is also becoming imperative. Traditional methods like bush um, following, um, rotational farming, gray, um, grafting, and the agro um, forestry is being replaced by vertical farming, the drones and the bees. The poly house, poly tunnel farming, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, and the automation, as well as robotics, amongst others. With them um, fluctuation in global oil prices, Nigeria can diversify its earnings by making agriculture attractive through ensuring safety of farmers. If the United States can rank top by volume of exports, um, which is $72 billion, then Nigeria can replicate same. Wow. You know, <laughs> you know whenever we talk about these matters on um, food and insecurity, it always comes down to the top point. 
Nigeria as a country does not even know how many Nigerians it hopes to feed. No computer data, uh, no computer data of the entire people in the we country. We are told we are, we are over 200 million people. We are not sure of how Estimates, many and how many were. We are mm -hmm. not sure. And then secondly, we have ignored something. The desertification of the upper part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. that's Zamfara, Katsina, Borno, it is causing an issue. Yeah. Upon the desertification, naturally man moves towards water. So taking away the desertification, let me add another bigger problem. Our borders are insecure. Mm. So I we are in a quagmire of issues. If we that we, if we do not get right as a country, which other simple countries have gotten right, we just might be able to never solve our insecurity and food insecurity. Uh, we will never might solve our insecurity and food insecurity. I think. And, and you see what you're saying now. Someone I was with someone yesterday who made a statement, and the person said, "Listen, we're complaining about the rising cost of tomatoes in the market." They said he went to, it was a lady with her husband, they went to the mall and one of the supermarkets and they realized that about, he said all, oh, like I assume it's not all, Ma majority of the tomato paste that they saw there were all from Nigeria. Now the question is this, with the advent of these companies being set up to produce tomato paste, have we deliberately increased the amount of tomatoes that are produced in the north? Mm. Because now these people will be taking a chunk of the same tomatoes that are supposed to circulate around Nigeria to produce tomato pastes, sell the same tomato paste to us, whereas we are left with a smaller quantity than we normally would. Mm -hmm. And we know the, 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 the theory of uh, economics, buying and selling. and uh, Demand uh, and uh, supply. You know, demand and supply, yeah. thank you. So, of course, that will increase. I think we're not strategic enough in, in the way we address food as a security in Nigeria. Someone made a statement, a colleague made a statement about South Africa. I said, every year, the people wait on government to hear government's policies before the strike, especially after an election, because they know that is the ne next big thing. That's the next way to make money. Yes, government came in and said they want to do a Greek, and not just this government. Even before then, uh, we know what uh, Mr. Adeshino did. How many of us have plugged into a Greek? Now we're complaining about the basins that they want to go discover oil in the north as if blah, blah, blah. And I say, fine. Number one, that's the story for another day. The money will not be given to the state government. It will be given to NNPC or whoever to explore. Mm. And it will be shared the normal way of old, whatever that is. Now, the truth is, the people, quote unquote, in the north often look for a way to resolve their problems. We know, I mean, I'm shocked that we had, we've had this headsman crisis in so many years. And the question is, how many state governors in the South have decided that, you know what, let's start producing an amount of rice. Let's start producing an amount of yam. Let's start feeding ourselves in the South so that if, if this thing worsens, not just that we're self-sufficient, but we can even sell food to the North to help them out because they cannot create food. We're putting everything back on the federal government, which they, which they should take the blame, no big deal. But what are we doing as a people to make sure that we have food to eat? I, I think um, uh, everything has been politicized um, to a very large extent because you just raised a very valid point. We've been, there's been headsman crisis for a very long time. It just became, very, I don't even know what now made it, brought it to the front burner, but it's always been there. Yes. Um, we've always had cases of people being attacked um, in their farms. We've mm -hmm. had cases of um, um, cows moving into farms mm -hmm. and eating things. Eating, yeah. But you see, because everything is about the politics, everything, um, the, the, the advent, the oil boom, <laughs> completely destroyed our capacity to think. Yeah, it shut us down. We, we so hibernated. We hibernated. If at all we did not shut down, we hibernated. <laughs> um, so we have a minister for agriculture. Mm -hmm. And without putting blames, pointing fingers, but the question is, which goes back to that same question, what's your developmental plan? Mm -hmm. Femi Additional opened our eyes to a lot, of, a things, lot of things. A lot of things. Cassava bread. As a matter of fact, with, when you listen to Femi Adeshino, you will uh, understand... No, no uh, Akimumi Adeshino. Akimumi Adeshino, Ade, sorry. Yeah. Akimumi Adeshino. Femi Adeshino is the um, first of worries. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> know, Femi well, you know when you were even, talking? Even, you notice my eyes were going. Even Femi listening to me. Are you referring to me? So am I this? No, I'm not going to I'm not talking about you, sir. 
So, <laughs> Akin will be additional open yeah. our eyes to huge <coughs> opportunity in the agri, agri, agro um, okay. uh, sector. Um, and you will be shocked how many billions of Naira has been voted for this. Hmm. That information is not public because, guess what, Karade? If the information is made public, uh, it's made available. If the process of the dissemination of that money is not through government, if it was through independent institutions mm. that also exist, I am sure my village in Ohozara produces rice. I recall, I recall very well at a time when I was there, <laughs> they would go to rice farm, they will produce rice. When you hear uh, about rice. Mm. I, we, I'm from Ebony State and my village produces rice. But the process of that production is still is too archaic to feed the, the clan. To meet our demand. To yes. meet that, our demand. Why can't we move in automation there? Why can't they move a factory there? But it can be done because there is someone who represents us who will rather keep that conversation at the State House of Assembly or Federal House. You know, there, there was a one-time Minister of Agriculture, and I remember he really celebrated that we started exporting cocoa. <laughs> no, it's, oh, it's, cocoa, yes, okay, it's okay. impressive that we are exporting yeah. cocoa, but I'll give you the numbers. We've always been doing no, it. No, I'll, yeah. I'll give you the numbers. As of 20, this was 2016. As of 2016, um, we're, we're making as much as $3 billion dollars from so our cocoa. exports in cocoa. On cocoa wow. okay. But now, the na na normal Nigerian will say impressive, but we need to pay attention to something. Our imports of cocoa derivatives, mm. which are cocoa, uh, chocolates, chocolates all whatever, the things that was at $9.6 billion, Whoa. meaning Nigeria is running at a deficit it of $6.3 billion. $6 mm. $6 billion. Yeah. When, you are, when you have the raw material, what is your plan for processing? And now, mm. this processing deficiency is what Nigeria can feed itself. I Absolutely. don't have a doubt about Absolutely. that. I've traveled all across Nigeria. I've been to every state. Nigeria can feed itself. Nigeria's problem is storage and uh, processing. Processing and storage. Yeah. Those are don't two have. And, no, and there's one other thing, transportation. A lot of these mm. things, they, just, they are there for so long, bringing them down here. Because by the time you look at the, the cost, mm -hmm. the variance in the pricing from the village or wherever it is coming down to the city, and even within the city, from the amount of it's something is sold in Ikorodu is different from the amount is sold in probably Orile or somewhere in Badagri. True. Why? It's the same Lagos. But they are, and the amount is not just little 100 or 200, at times as much as 500, 600. Mm. And I always tell them there are, there are no headsmen between Ikorodu and Badagri. Ah, no. So you cannot blame headsmen no, for that. No, no, again. Kayo, they, they are headsmen. <laughs> they are headsmen in uniforms. No, no, no. You know, this, in uniforms. <laughs> Collecting something. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. I have a friend from Benue State. Mm. Her name is Mimi. And Mimi will tell you that Mimi will travel to her village yeah. and she will send pictures and she will say, This big yam you are seeing is less than 1,000 naira. And when you see the big yam, and she will tell you that that yam, yam is probably 400 naira in her village, she will bring a basket of tomatoes and tell you this is one 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 thousand two hundred naira that same basket goes for six thousand when it arrives yeah, yeah. i was in i was in just before before i came oh, okay. here you know i don't live in lagos uh -huh. i'm always bragging about oh, that yes. thing. <laughs> so so um i was in just and the basket of tomatoes there is 800 it's even less than oh the same. but what happens and i sent to my sister and sister-in-law and my wife was apparently in lagos at the time i sent to them and transporting it and if you divide it i was wondering i said why is tomato that expensive in Lagos? If I decided to start my, my, uh, transporting tomatoes mm -hmm. up and down, I'll make a lot of money. But I'll tell you what Nigeria ignored the most, which is the bane of our problems with insecurity right now. You see, the troubles in sub-Saharan Africa, you asked the question, you said, yeah. how did it move to the front burner? Mm. The troubles in sub-Saharan Africa, so when Libya was breaking down, Sudan was causing havoc, mm. more guns were coming into the system in sub-Saharan Africa. Nigeria, as usual, didn't care. We're spending money on oil. The uh, mm. National Assembly was buying new cars. We refused to secure our borders. What happened is those guns and those borders mm. trickled down. Mm. Remember that our politicians hired some of these people for their little vendettas. Let me not only put, place my hands on the politicians alone. 
Our small community referral fights, and I'm not going to mention mm, who versus ones, who, yeah. we hired a few of these gun criminals from outside mm. to fight our wars. Sure. And everybody's wondering all of a sudden, how the hell did they get here? Yeah. Everybody's not your business. Really? And you see, like what you're mm. saying is so apt that, no, listen, I, I always, we spend, we don't understand and we don't take our time to really study about security. If we did, we realize that Nigeria hasn't done anything. Now, Egypt doesn't have insurrection. South Africa doesn't have insurrection. Algeria doesn't have insurrection. But in terms of GDP, they spend more on securing on their military than Nigeria, who is suffering mm. and all round does. We spend less than, I think, 0.5% or 0.6%. I think Egypt spends, South Africa spends around 0.9%. Egypt 1.2 or 1 1.6%. Uh, uh, Algeria is it 2 or whatever of their, of their budget. And their budget, let's face the facts, most likely will be bigger than Nigeria's budget. So in terms of the actual amount, they spend way more on their military every single year than we, Nigerians, who are confronted, confronted with, with insurrection across board from the northern part mm. to the southern part. And that is military, not to talk of the interior mm. security. I mean, uh, the police and blah, blah, blah. We're spending a lot, yes. And I think one of the challenges people are having is interaction, explanation on where this money is going and how it's being exactly. done. But the cost of funding the military is no joke. I was, there was this report that came out some years ago that said a fully kit American soldier, I mean at war, the war from maybe in Afghanistan or so, I, I'm not sure, but I need to confirm that maybe it's worth around, is it 40000 or $30,000? Fully wow. kit, like standing full soldier ready for battle. Wow. And that, that amount, though, if you're not sure, it will come back that same way. Mm. Maybe it will depreciate to around twenty or ten or 5000 and when it's going into... So funding the military mm. is heavy. And... Where, when we say, and I, when I look at Nigerian security, I laugh because, listen, all, most of our expenses are going to the military. The civil defense service, who is supposed to be the front line, first line of call in the area and all that, we're not spending enough on them. Mm. Even look at their, their uniform, it's tattered. The police, we're not spending on them. And they're supposed to be the human, have the human face, be able to interact with you. So these people are hungry. We're not spending yet on security. Mm. You know, so, Kyle, yeah. I tried to bring out one point. Mm. Spending on our military mm. is like securing, let me base, bring it down to base, it's like securing an entire estate. Spending on your police is like putting burglar proof on your house. Mm. That's to tell okay. you the deficiency okay. we have in Nigeria. Now, imagine we have, we're, to, we're approximately give or take, as we call ourselves, 200 million, mm. our usual number. How many people do we have in our police force? Less than 500,000. Of those less than 500,000, 250,000 are guarding vital assets, be it banks, CBN, ETC, then, another, then and politicians. Then you have 250,000 policing 200 million people. Mm. UN is one policeman to mm. 10 in a best situation. One to 10. Mm. Nigeria has one to 10,000. One policeman to 10,000. How are you going to secure 10,000 people hmm. as, one as one policeman. It is, if we like, let's spend <laughs> $500 billion. As On long as that is, the, that is the amount of people we have, mm -hmm. it's not going to be mm. possible to police. Yeah. Yeah. We always mention state policing or whatever. I always, I always come up and I say, why do you talk about state police? You build from the ground up, not from the top down. So if you are going to be looking at anything, ethnic policing, if you grow up in a locality, Let's say you, let me give an example. Let's say you grew up in Etiosa from mm. when you were a child. If you join the police at age 20, there's nothing that is going on in Etiosa that you will not know. Mm. You know the bad boys. You, if they steal TV, you know, you can count who exactly. probably yes, yes. did it. Exactly. But you can now employ That's somebody from, from a degree mm. to come to, come to Lekki and expect him to handle. It doesn't work doesn't that work, way. Yeah. So instead of us clamoring, and I blame the middle class for this, for the so called fictitious state police with state governors, ordinary small state, uh, state uh, elections board that are giving them. No rival party can win elections. Mm. It's state police you want to give them. <laughs> <laughs> the emperors of states. Okay? So in my position, we should go actually be clamoring for local government police mm. in the hands of local government chairmen that we can hold responsible. Let's yeah. also remember that local governments are not immune. 
That's the local government oh, chairman okay. is not immune. They don't have immunity. Ah, really? If they cross you, ah, you didn't know. Ah, no, let no, me no, tell no, you too. No. So you are a TOSA chairman, you're Suri Leri. You know, anytime you yeah. just feel they've stolen one money, you carry them to court. They don't have immunity. Oh. <laughs> That's good news. I mean, you know, what do I mean? Start Thank you, Kule. <laughs> they should not start chasing me. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> even, even, even talking about security and delving back into the food and, and uh, bits. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the reasons, in my view, that we're not really transforming in uh, food is because the youth are not fully active. The banking sector, where it is today, is done by the youth. Movies, entertainment is done by you. Any active sector in Nigeria today is the youth. I think it's time for the youth to get involved in food mm. and security. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. Up next is Kule Lawal. Stay with us. <laughs>